camera. Um, I think we are on, aren't we? Yeah. yeah, we're on. Okay. So, okay, the bad news on sleep. <laughs> bad news on sleep. If you're coming off addiction. Uh, you know, because when I would sleep, as a food addict, I would knock myself out with food, like a drug, uh, late at night. You know, just eat and eat. And you know, when you eat so much, like you don't have any blood left in your brain. Yes. You know, it's like, you know, <laughs> you know, it's like you're just falling out because you're losing consciousness. So I, I would eat like for this medicated thing and then I'd just fall over dead on my bed and I would sleep. So, so, so that's. So it's a good sleep remedy while you can do food addiction. Now, when you stop, well, you know, when you've got a volcanic, volcano of repressed feelings that you haven't felt your whole life, and you stop the medicine, you stop the drugs, you stop the thing. In the beginning, you know, it's like you, you don't get good sleep. There's, you get angry, you get fearful, you get paranoid. It's like so much stuff is coming up. You know, it's like it's like. You know, like at night time, it's like all... And when you're, when you're in waking consciousness, waking consciousness is like a resistance because you're thinking, mm -hmm. there's lots of visual stimulation. Mm -hmm. So, to some extent, you know, you can be awake and thinking, and what should I do next? And even all of that is like a kind of a drug. It, it helps to keep, keep the feelings down. Yes, yes. So if you were to be still, yeah. just to be still, then everything's going to come up even faster. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so you, you've been yeah. awake and so things are going... So in the beginning, it's like, it's difficult. It's very difficult to get any sleep. And, it, yeah. and for me, it doesn't really matter. You know, if you're sleepless in the beginning, yes. you know, that's part of the process of mm -hmm. you releasing feelings because mm -hmm. you don't want to have so much extreme feelings at night, but actually all these extreme feelings coming out is good. It's good for you. Mm -hmm. Even if you have a few uh, things. Later on, when you release a lot of stuff and you're in peace, then mm -hmm. usually sleep is a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, However, you know, you can do things like cancel your beliefs in things like I, I can't get sleep or it's difficult for me to, to sleep. I cancel my belief, I, I'll never get to sleep or I find it difficult to go to sleep. Well, I'll talk about canceling beliefs in a few minutes. I started feeling the feelings in the middle of the night. I, just, I think that's the good. I just get into meditation and feel it. And, mm. and, yeah. And it's interesting, sorry, according to Chinese medicine, it's interesting stuff because during the night you actually go through all the different organs. Yes. Mm -hmm. And all the different organs have different feelings attached yes. to them. Right. And actually, yeah, and actually in between three and four, you have the liver, which is a very emotional organ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There. And so, yeah, it, oh. a lot of times people yeah. say, oh, I've got this. Yeah, that's yeah. night time. Yeah. Yeah. Between three and four. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think yeah. that's uh, that's probably part of the collective. Yeah. Three, three, three yeah. to four. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I, I think a really good one, I think this is a good tip for struggling ad addicts with sleep, is the observer. I mean, feel the feelings is slow. Yeah. But I think the ego hates the observer. Yes. So if you want to put Muji on, mm -hmm. if you want to put Muji, well, M O O J I, or of course in Miracles. <laughs> but uh, but I, th I think, you know, I have some videos called yeah. the Observer Tool. Yeah. But if you want to put something like that, sometimes the ego is so upset, mm -hmm. especially something like ego death. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like the ego death. <laughs> <laughs> put something <laughs> on like, <laughs> put, put ego, enlightenment and ego death. You know, and then probably you, know, you might get to sleep, you know, because it's like... It's true, I sleep with Rupert Spires and meditations. You put in light and teach you. Especially for them. But <laughs> Every time I have that, uh, that experience of the observer in meditation, I do feel that it's, there's a part, a moment that I really um, have, that I'm kind of willing, uh, even physically, to die. It's, yeah. a str it's a strange thing, but just surrender to a, a place where I really feel like, like mm -hmm. And I've done that, like what you were saying, with health, with an attack, with mm -hmm. an allergic attack. And there comes that moment where it's, it's, it's a truth. It's like, okay. Yeah, and the other, th the other tip, I guess, you know, I, I have compassion for people struggling to sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. One of the things to do, and it was what you said, uh, which is very inspiring, is like, don't resist. Mm. You know, don't resist. So I've, I've been through a lot of experiences with not resisting. Mm. And then when you do non-resist, you need, you need to sit up. You shouldn't be lying down mm. on, on, on a bed. It's like, so you can do that with sleep. And sometimes when you confront your ego, like I'm not going to resist 100%, 
sometimes you, you, you may end up going, you know, finding you go to sleep because ego doesn't like non-resistance. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have this attitude. You do the opposite of what ego wants to. So it's like you're tormented, you can't sleep. You sit on a chair, you back straight, and you're going to feel, you're going to sit there and just feel everything without resistance. Yeah. You're going to feel, it's almost like you're calling the ego's bluff. Okay, I'm, I'm willing... <laughs> I'm willing to die of sleeplessness. I, you know, I'm not going to sleep. Even if I don't sleep today, I'm going to sit here and feel out that I can't sleep. And then if I die on this chair after about 15 hours of not being able to sleep, so be it. Yeah? And then you just, you just don't resist. Yeah. It's like, okay, you're tormenting the ego. Like you're saying, I'm not going to sleep and I want to yeah. go to sleep. Yeah. So I'm going to, like, I'm not going to sleep. If you don't want, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to die of not sleeping. So that's how I did it for my panic attacks. And you sit there. And when you go, there's a, there's a grace point when you stop your resistance mm -hmm. to life. It's mm -hmm. like, your ego's like saying, oh, I don't like this. I don't want this to happen. I want to <laughs> sleep. So you just, like, let those thoughts go. And just go, and you go, well, if you don't get to sleep, you might die of non-sleep or something, you know. So, okay, I'm going to die of not, not enough sleep, okay. And uh, so you just sort of sit there, and, and then you just take all your mental things off, like all the resistance, all your fights against feeling sleepy or not getting enough sleep. Cancel your thoughts, just don't dwell on those thoughts, and just welcome it 100%. And, yeah. Sorry, but the interesting stuff is... I, I cannot go there through the mind. So when I, 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 I put myself into that where I say, I'm not going to resist. Yeah. But if I'm thinking, I'm not resist, I'm not going to resist, I'm not going to resist, I'm going there through, through the mind. So well, a lot of times in meditation, when I'm surrendering, I'm feeling the feelings, and I ask God to direct me. You know what I mean? Like even into stepping into the observer, I cannot go there through the mind. Because that's not the observer. That's a dualistic way of yeah, you know, that's the mind. So I kind of ask for, for divine grace to act into it. You, can, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, you can ask for grace. But field of feelings is not about thinking. Uh, field of feelings is about not attaching to thoughts while you experience. Yes. Uh, yes. So. True. But there comes a moment where I, when I feel the feeling, feel the feeling, and I'm, I'm there, um, you step into presence. Yes. And it's not, there's no thinking whatsoever. There's no... Uh, wanting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of times I've been there like, oh, I feel fine, I feel fine. but it's, it's, it's the mind. It's still the mind going through it, you know what I mean? You, you need a little bit more practice because when you're in the field of feelings, it's a place of no mind. Yes. Field of feelings is a place of no mind. But in the beginning, you have to practice detaching from thoughts. And remember, field of feelings, oh, we'll go into that a bit later on if the people knew. But field of feelings is as soon as a thought emerges, you let it go immediately. You unhook from the thought, immediately it arises. Uh, for people in early addiction, th this is extraordinarily difficult. But you, you start the practice off, as soon as the thought goes, I don't like this, you cut it off, uh, I, and then let it go and just be in the feeling. Oh, and then, then oh, this is, the, yeah, and then, you, and then this, this, the stop, and just feel. And then the next thought starts to merge, you stop it, and then back to the feeling. So, you, as you do this each time, you're giving less time for the thoughts to go off into a story, like, oh, I, I won't get any sleep today, or whatever. So it becomes, a, like a, it becomes eventually it becomes um, an aspect of consciousness, not of your thinking. Mm -hmm. It becomes an attitude, like a, the ego attitude is think constantly and never feel. Mm -hmm. Okay, think constantly and never feel. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be an enlightened if you want to be enlightened, you have to do, your, your whole commitment to life must be, don't think and feel. Mm -hmm. If you don't, like uh, Course in Miracles says, all my thoughts are meaningless. Mm -hmm. that's, why it's at, that's why it's at enlightenment. Like uh, the big book in 12 Steps is not at enlightenment, you know, but the Course in Miracles is at the level of enlightenment. Every single thought in your head is meaningless. You know, if the, if the Holy Spirit could speak and you, you have to say, like, do you think this is a, a, a special thought? Yeah. He would say, he would slap you. Holy Spirit would slap you and say, this is not a special thought. No such thing as special thoughts. Which doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that the mind won't be present once you get into enlightenment, but the other way around. The mind makes a good servant 
to the heart, not the other. Yes, yeah. So, so the, 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 the thoughts which arise out of the limitless field, then you could say that what's remaining, uh, the body is just an instrument of the yeah. divine. Exactly. But there is, no, there is no individual there. There is no ego there. The, think, the ego thinking is gone. So what happens is just an instrument of the divine. So, Does it take a lot of time to get, to get there? It, it, Muji gets this question a lot. How long, but uh, how, you know, because all my life I, I you know, I, I looked at Buddha's story, I looked at this, this, and I thought, man, to get into enlightenment, you gotta go to the forest for 30 years, you know, just say goodbye to your family, uh, no bike for you, <laughs> no house, no whatever. You know what I mean? Well, you want to cancel that thought yeah. because yeah. Yeah. You, can no, 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 you can have miracles, yeah. Nowadays I don't do anything like that, but still. The other way, someone, the other day, someone was asking me, Muji, is there any of your disciples actually enlightened? And he said, which I think it was a great Ooh. question, because, you know, it's kind what of... What did you say? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. He I'm was like, now. yes, yes, but uh, there's been more than one person, and my suggestion to that person a lot of times is, you will not speak about this. No. You will, because he says that you marinate and you let it sit, and you let it digest, and you let it, you know, because the, the, you can go back, you can fall back somehow, I don't know. But, I don't know. You just want to let that thought go, it's yeah. not a useful thought. I mean, I, what I'd say on a practical Katie. level... Byron Katie, that would just happen like that, and yeah. I believe she's definitely what? United. Oh. Byron Katie. Mm -hmm. uh, Romano yeah. was also instant. Yeah, but he was yes. like a kid, right, when that happened. Yeah, but I think in, in Byron Gates' case, you know, she was really at a very, very low point in her life. She was mm -hmm. really depressed. I don't know, does oh, anyone like, know? Like Eckhart Tolle, too. Yeah, was right. she was, so. uh, you know, she was depressed, yeah. So she was very depressed, I was in one of those, yeah. yeah um, but it feels she like was kind of lying down in yes. absolute despair and whatever, you know. But it feels um, like those cases. Really she woke up. Is when that extreme, case, like Eckhart Tolle is also thinking of killing himself. Yeah. You know, when you get to that extreme where, you know, kind yeah. of like so Hawkins too in a blizzard. And you yeah. So, yes. But once you don't go into an extreme, uh, I don't know, I'm just, I think it's mm. the point in my mind that going like, hey, why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> Well, I mean, I think uh, you just want to cancel those thoughts because yeah. they become limiting beliefs. And um, also, what I'd say on a practical level is developing discipline mm -hmm. in not attaching to thoughts and feeling mm -hmm. feelings. Have the, have the reverse attitude. So addiction is do the stuff don't, that you don't feel uh, and, and think. So even thinking is an addiction. Yeah. The, the idea that, that your thoughts are meaningful and that you have a mind, an individual mind, is an addiction. Mm -hmm. I you control my life. Yeah, you know, that's, that's part of being having the first addiction, which is that you are an individual that has a mind. Mm. Yeah, so it's like the first thought does the damage if anyone's in 12 steps. So, um, also the other major addiction which the Course touches on is I am my body. Mm. If you identify, I mean someone's using a lovely word here, identify. Mm. If you identify that this is you, this thing mm -hmm. is you, mm -hmm. or if you identify that these thoughts are important, mm -hmm. if you identify, if you give them interest or value or meaning, then you become that. Yes. So I, I am, so once you identify with your thinking, you believe your, the illusion is you are your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Once you identify that this thing is you, then the illusion is that I am this body. It becomes a belief. Mm -hmm. I believe I'm in separation here you guys are separate from me, and I am my thinking and my body. So I exist at that level. Mm -hmm. So you, you experience at that level of, of fear and separation. Mm -hmm. That becomes your level of consciousness, depending on how identified you are with your thinking and your body, contracts you into a greater feeling of fear and separation. Mm -hmm. As you release the fear and separation, the repressed feelings and your addiction to thoughts, then you start to go off into the infinite realms, you see. It gradually, it just loosens up uh, as you release it all. Okay, so I even forgot what we were talking about, so I'll shut it off there.